Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. I would like to take the opportunity to document my summer bloomers, my novelty hybrid Phalaenopsis. The thing is, I've had the most stressful winter with warm to hot growers that I can ever remember. Stressful because my temperatures were not to their liking at all and I have not been using heat mats or any heater to supplement any form of heat that they would much rather have during cold months of the year. So let me preempt everything that we're going to be looking at today. The lowest temperatures I've had in my grow space have been 15 degrees Celsius. The highest have rarely gone up to 17, 18. Summer bloomers, novelty hybrids, they would like to have 20 at a minimum, 22 degrees would be better, and anything above that. The next point I would like to then also preempt is, in the past four months, I've only used my supplemental lighting five times, and we have had some seriously dull days. So where they live on the bottom shelf, they do have supplemental lighting, but I have not switched it on at all. I would say in inverted commas at all, because five times clearly I've switched it on, but not to the extent that these orchids would prefer. Summer bloomers, novelty hybrids prefer much, much more light than any other complex Phalaenopsis hybrid. So with that out of the way, I have had a very nerve wracking couple of months. I have actually also resorted to switching the lights on as from midnight to 8 a.m. because our electricity costs, the rate, there are certain time zones that we have where the rate is at its cheapest. Doesn't mean it's cheap, but it's cheaper than let's say from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. That is the most expensive time of day to use electricity where I'm at. So I've gone the rogue way. I thought some light is better than no light and I've switched lights on at night. Now you may say, why would you do that? Because it messes with the biorhythm of the orchid. And yes, it does. But I was caught between a rock and a hard place. It is very dark where my grow space is, even though it is facing west. It is a little bit set back from the rest of the building. And then where these orchids live, underneath the shelf, it's even darker. And maybe if it's a sunny day, maybe the afternoon sun will hit the lower shelf for 30 minutes. So my calculation and my gamble was if they don't get any adequate light for days and days and days consecutively, putting the lights on at midnight to 8 a.m., at least they're getting something and probably they wouldn't notice the difference between dark and light because they're pretty much in the dark during the day. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that was my gamble. Now, it is the beginning of the season, even though I'm not out of the woods yet. The coming two weeks, maybe 10 days, are still going to be extremely challenging for these orchids to make it through. But I want to start now by seeing what it's looking like because the situation can't get any worse. Two weeks, 10 days are not gonna make any difference after what we've been through the past four weeks. So for me, this is the right time to have a look at them. And then hopefully if they do come through and bounce back when it gets warmer, maybe in the middle of summer or at the end of the season, we can see if there has been a significant improvement. So if you're still here with me and you're interested, I have to bring all of that to your attention because I know that maybe in the comments it will say, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you use lights, etc. I wanted to get that out of the way. I want to document what they look like now. This is my Yin's Black Eagle. It did bloom for me the first season that I got it. And those were my spikes. Yes, I'm going to take credit for them because it was just a teeny tiny seedling when it arrived. It's been with me almost four years. And you can see that, you know, it's grown up and all of that business. And then it hasn't bloomed for me since. However, I also now have a new leaf, which it grew last season, but since then, nothing. So I have a feeling that this orchid is on a reset. It did not appreciate the conditions I gave it. The leaves should also be much, much more yellow. And this is something I want to document is the color of my leaves to then get a better idea of what it's going to look like during the season, after the season. The leaves are extremely cold. When it's nice and sunny, like a day like today, I have them on my south facing patio, facing a very bright white facade for their light source, but it is permanent shade and their leaves feel cold. 
But again, I'm in a rock and a hard place. They need some light and I'm not switching my supplemental lights on. So Yin's Black Eagle is holding on. This is my Phalaenopsis by Alasia variety Cerula. Right, this one is showing signs of cold damage. Look at this leaf. It's actually curled to such a degree, it's curling over the other structure. However, it is growing a spike. I don't even think that this spike is going to bloom because I'm constantly moving these orchids in and out. My main focus is give them the light, forfeit any blooms. They need light. So here we are. You can see real signs of stress on this one with the curling of the leaves. That is cold damage in my case. I also had a little bit of what I thought suspicious looking possible stem rot. So I've been treating this with cinnamon. Let me just also add that I would have preferred to have started with a monthly regimen of magnesium, just Epsom salt soap. But because it's been so cold during the month of February, I did not do the month of February soap. The idea being just maintaining a little bit of water at the base so that I don't lose my wicking efficacy of my leka, but to soak the whole pot during a time where it's cold and have the evaporative cooling also kick into effect, that would be a big mistake to be adding cool to cold in a cold environment. So no Epsom salts during the month of February. My speciosa crossed with Violacea. Right, these are the old leaves down here from when the orchid arrived. I am expecting old leaves to drop. I would prefer them to do that during the summer where it can really push the nutrients in. And this way, I don't have to be guessing, is it a deficiency or is it just because they are old leaves? So I'm a little bit half and half on my analysis here. I mean, old leaf, yeah, possible. And then we have these two leaves. I am thinking this one at least is a deficiency. Let's look at the other one. That is not a deficiency. That is just a lack of light because of the way the other leaf is overlapping it. So, huh, deficiency. The new structures are not showing signs of deficiency. I'm also not concerned about the wrinkling right here, the curling curvy effect. Some Phalaenopsis hybrids will have that as a natural form. It is not the same as this right here. That is cold. This is a total different thing here. It's just the way the leaf is growing. If it gets worse, then I will know what is going on. We're trying to hold on to this one and keep it ticking over. I hope I don't keep repeating that because that is actually the status quo of all of these. We're just trying to make it through to the warmer temperatures. This is the one that really worries me. This is Zengmin Giraffe. I lost a whole plantlet here to the side this winter. I boil that down to possible start of stem rot. I also lost a spike, which I cut off. That was yellowing. I treated with dragon's blood. I've got so many spikes on the go, but you can see this orchid is not looking happy. I'm also very concerned about the roots, but I'm not interfering now. The reason being it is absolutely controversial time of year. It would be a big risk to stress them out now as they already are stressed. Interfering and checking the roots at this point in time, I am sure that my giraffe would collapse. She doesn't look like she's going to collapse, but trust me, I know her, I saw her before winter and I'm seeing her now. I am very concerned. This is deficiency right here. And here we have a leaf dying back. My concern here is I'm seeing the leaf die back from the stem towards the tip. That is always a warning sign for me. I have already retreated with dragon's blood, so that would be the second treatment. And now we wait. Now, you can see more deficiency here, and even the new leaf has a deficiency. And here could be the issue that stem rot is starting or was there and has now stopped, but the nutrients couldn't be absorbed. And secondly, if that's not the case, the fact that I have been so conservative with any kind of nutrients just so that the root ball doesn't get too much of a chill, all these factors are playing a part right now when it comes to my Zengmin giraffe. It's a question of, will she hold on? And if not, then we're going to have to say goodbye to Zengmin Giraffe. 
This is KTC Kaokichakut, crossed with Corningiana. This one is by nature a very, very slow grower. So she doesn't want to grow roots fast, maybe one or two per season, if that. I don't know what's going on in the pot. She feels pot bound. She's been with me since day one when this collection started. Her slow growth has resulted in all aspects of symptoms showing up because of stress, nutrient deficiency and cold. She hasn't aborted her spikes. That gives me hope because if a fowl starts to abort the spikes, it's either because it needs the nutrients because of stress, it's not getting enough. It can just be done with the spike and it'll grow another one. But seeing as I don't see any signs of growth on this orchid at all, even the leaf that she was slowly developing towards the end of the season of 21, it stopped growing when the temperatures cooled down. I'm not seeing any sign or hint of a new leaf. I'm thinking she is just conserving all kinds of energy in hopes to come out through the colder temperatures and then eventually get going. Again, a very slow grower won't just get growing and respond to the temperatures warming up or the day lengths increasing. And I can say that because we're going to look at another orchid, another novelty hybrid, and you can see the difference between the two crosses here and how they're responding as opposed to let's get the Tabasco Tex. This is Tabasco Tex. Here you can see that I've had some nutrient deficiency and I fully get that, not concerned. You can see cold damage, I am not concerned. And you can see that the new little basal growth here has a leaf with a bit of nutrient deficiency and a new leaf starting. That is why I'm saying everyone is a little bit different, but they all have had the same treatment and everybody responds a bit different based on their parents. So my Tabasco text is showing me the classic signs of what I was not able to do throughout the winter, but because of the extended day lengths now, it's continuing to grow. It is responding. Whether it's going to respond well and grow big structures is a completely different thing because clearly, again, I'm not fertilizing at this point in time until the temperatures are right for them. But it is responding to the longer days by growing something, whereas the Corningiana over there, the Kaukichakut, not a light. The same with my Leodora Sweet Memory here, responding to longer day lengths. I've got a branching spike here. This is the older spike from last year. And I have the new spike that grew throughout the winter, extending beautifully and showing the first sign of buds over there. Once again, if they're gonna blast, I am not concerned. Of course, it's a shame. Light is more important. So I will continue to move this orchid in and out as and when necessary. She is in desperate need of a repot, not touching her this time of year either. You can see she is losing the lowest leaf here. My concern, again, I've got green tip, but over here at the stem, this is the way the senescing started. So I'm keeping an eye on this one. However, her stem is way above the media, so it could just be the normal way of losing its lowest leaf. It was the sunburnt leaf as well, so at least we'll get rid of that nasty. What we can't avoid now is here are signs of deficiency. And here are the signs of cold damage, curled leaves right there. But at least she is responding positively and hasn't gone down with any kind of other detrimental issues where I would probably lose her. Her roots are extending in the back, which is great. Now would be the time to clean her up, repot her. But again, no extra stress at this moment. If I miss the timing for a repot for the rest of the year, I do not care. In this case, I really don't. When it comes to Phalaenopsis, I've got plenty of roots in the pot. I do plenty of flushing in the summer. My main concern is just to protect them from any further stress. Repotting is not a priority. Let's look at the last one. This one is Cornus Servi variety Chatelade. She's a beast of an orchid. She is very vigorous and she's holding on very, very nicely. This one is a mealy bug magnet. It is constantly under supervision. And today I just thought, well, now that we are outside, I might as well just give it a little bit of a paint with some garlic alcohol 
because I just saw some mealies in here. And I know that I will get distracted once I finish this video and go on to something else, completely forgetting to make sure that when I bring this orchid back inside later on, the mealybugs are not around to perpetuate a problem. But you can see that in this instance, everything is looking fine. I do have some mechanical damage on the leaf ends right here. That is because I keep moving her around. Now this one right here, is possibly a little bit of a nitrogen deficiency, also in combination with mechanical damage. Again, very conservative on the fertilizer and she being such a large orchid, she really should be getting a lot more fertilizer than I've been giving her. As it is a little bit of a lower leaf, I am not concerned, but she's also responding to longer day lengths. You can see she's starting to extend her spikes, which is cool. And this one right here, this spike, is a branch, which is new in the past couple of weeks that she's started to extend this branching here. This little spike down here is also starting to extend. So the corner survey is definitely a trooper and holding on really well. As soon as temperatures rise, she is going to get a calcium nitrate soak. She had her magnesium soak as well in January, but because she's such a big orchid, I need to get some calcium into her I don't want her to be aborting any of these spikes. After everything that we've been through, I do want my blooms to bloom as best as possible. If she were to abort anything happening here at the tip of the spikes, that would be the next wave of cold or the fact I keep bringing her outside causing bud blast. That should be the only reason why I would forfeit blooms, the bud blast, due to moving her location while she's forming buds. It shall not be because of calcium deficiency. So I am looking forward to some warm attempts because calcium nitrate going in. So I've always been harping on about the fact that light is a priority and whether I get blood blast or not, I need them out in the light before anything else takes over so that at least they get some. I have one exception though. It's more of a novelty hybrid, a more complex variety of novelty hybrid. It is the Pinkton Bronze Age. That one, I'm not moving in and out. That one doesn't require as much light as these classic summer blooming fowls do. So that one I do have inside because it is forming a spike and buds and I have not seen those blooms in two years. It did not bloom for me last year. That is why I'm thinking that probably it's behaving the same way as the Yin's Black Eagle. It had a year of reset. The Yin's Black Eagle did as well. I just hope that now the Yin's Black Eagle is going to come out of that reset and not sulk so much that I won't see the blooms again for 2022. Pinkton Bronze Age stays inside as close to the light as I can without it getting direct sun because if I'm not vigilant, I would get sunburn on those leaves. Hoping to see Pinkton Bronze Age in the near future, bar any clumsy elbows. <laughs> Oh, and then there's another one that I keep forgetting, and I really shouldn't forget that one because it was a long time wish list orchid of mine. Forgetting that I have it is akin to blasphemy. <laughs> another one I never bring outside because A, she hasn't been transitioned yet, and I am still trying to get to know her, is my Phalaenopsis pulchra. So you can see how dark her leaves are as well. They should have a beautiful lime green color to them as well. But this is the position on that shelf that she's been living and biding her time throughout the winter. Very rarely did she get direct sun and when she did only for about 30 minutes as well. So her leaves have darkened considerably compared to when I got her and I had her outdoors throughout the summer of 21. But unexpectedly, I am so surprised. She's growing a spike. Of all things, I was not expecting a spike. Her light levels are far too low. And even though now you see new root tips, well, yeah, I am not transitioning her during these conditions under any circumstance. So what she's been getting is about 100 parts per million of fertilizer every once in a while into the mask where she has aerial roots touching that water. When that that then evaporates, I add a little bit of plain RO water. And in January, she also got a bit of just Epsom salts into that reservoir so that maybe we can avoid deficiencies straight away. So my Phalaenopsis pulchra holding on, growing a spike, responding to the longer days. I'm so happy whether she's going to bloom or not. I cannot tell you how glad I am this orchid is actually doing well. 
I hope that you enjoyed this little bit of a um, assessment of what is going on with my summer blooming fowls. And I'm really crossing my fingers that the next time we see them, we see a masked improvement that because the conditions that they love so much have finally arrived and then all of us, them, myself, we can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> fingers crossed, deep breath. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I appreciate your time and support so much. I say it, I mean it. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.